What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. I'm Ryan Thomas, the host of the Thomas Take, bringing you the latest news in mixed martial arts, NFL, MLB, you name it. I cover it. Um, I always have a take. I always have an opinion. I've always been one to uh, state my opinion, state my case, and go uh, go step up to the plate when... Uh, a pitch is thrown at me. Um, I step back and and I keep swinging. So um, back again to do another uh, Thomas Take podcast. Yes, I still do have my sinus infection. I am taking prednisone and amoxicillin, and I'm feeling a little bit better. Uh, Today when I took my prednisone, a piece of it got lodged in my tooth, and it is the worst-tasting pill that I have ever taken. So for anybody that has to take prednisone, do not try to chew it or put it in your food. I actually tried to put it in soup and it it just got stuck in my teeth. And it it was the worst tasting, uh, pill that I have ever, that I've ever taken ever random, but I I had to throw that out there. It was a part of my day to day that I just can't seem to shake. Um, but yeah, later today I'll be meeting with um, ground force fights, uh, bantamweight challenger, David Whitman, David, the villain Whitman ground force fights is an amateur based mixed martial arts organization in Buffalo, New York, uh, based out of Buffalo, New York. And they will be having a card at the, uh, quality Inn suites, I believe in Batavia. Um, and David Whitman will be challenging for the bantamweight title. Um, I, will be there March 25th for that fight, and you will hear my voice commentating for those fights on that card, and I'm meeting with David Whitman today to talk to him and uh, pick his brain a little bit about the promotion, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, say that I that I got that opportunity to uh, work with Ground Force Fights, I work on podcasts and stuff like that. I, I really am enjoying this, really am enjoying this a lot. I, I think I'm building a big... Uh, listener base of people that are really attracted to uh, what I have to say. They 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 uh, enjoy hearing my opinion. They tune in to hear my opinion. And case in point, my Super Bowl show, post Super Bowl show, did so well. Uh, it was one of the trending shows on Spreaker dot com. Uh, one of the better uh, post Super Bowl shows on Spreaker dot com. Out of all the sports podcasts that are on Spreaker.com, mine was, you know, top five, which is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I started this um, just as something to do, something to kill some time, but it's really turned into a big, uh, big passion for me. I, I look at it as like my own business, um, and, and, I, and I look forward to uh, continue, you know, continuing to see the uh, growth of my career um, and this podcast in general being a part of that. So that being said, there is mixed martial arts news to talk about. George St. Pierre, the former UFC welterweight champion is returning to the octagon. Uh, it is, it is reported that he has agreed to terms on a contract, a multi-fight contract with the UFC. Um, from what I have heard, he should be returning in September or October towards the third quarter of the 2017 calendar year for the UFC. Um, and I am ecstatic. Everybody knows that GSP has been my favorite fighter in mixed martial arts, uh, since day one, since my first, you know, my first years of, of watching mixed martial arts. The first fight that got me attracted was Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner. Before that, I knew a lot about Chuck Liddell and the Randy Coutures and the Tito Ortizes and uh, Ken Shamrock and Hoist Gracie, Dan Severn, all those guys from the past. Um, but the fight that really got me hooked to it was the Ultimate Fighter Season 1 and the Ultimate Fighter Season finale back in 2004, 2005. Uh, but along the way, there's been so many stars created by the UFC. And one of those guys that I got to watch from the beginning to the end, which was a semi-retirement, was George St. Pierre. I got to watch him defend his title over and over again versus the top competition. But before that, he had that devastating upset loss to Matt Serra, um, 
got back on the horse like a like a true champion, put his um, put his heart on the line, put put everything on the line to fight Matt Hughes again to get to Matt Sarah to get his belt back, and then from there on he had one of the greatest championship runs in UFC history. He was the welterweight champion for seven eight years. So the day that he retired, um, I was very upset. You know, UFC one sixty seven. On November of 2013, it was the UFC's 20th anniversary card where George St. Pierre fought Johnny Hendricks to a split decision victory. And to see him retire in the octagon, saying that he was going to go away for a little while, I knew that he would eventually come back, but I did have, you know, my doubts. It was something that I thought about a lot as an MMA fan, whether or not GSP would come back. Um, and, and I'm so happy to say that that... that looks to be the case. MMAfighting.com reported that uh, GSP will be returning um, in the third quarter of 2017. Who that will be against, I have my opinion on that, um, which I'm going to save that for a little bit later, but for, for, you know, coming up soon. But um, I'm just very excited to say that he is back in the octagon, uh, back under the UFC banner, back under the UFC roster. And I talked exclusively about how uh, or extensively, I should say, about how the UFC is desperate for stars right now. You have Conor McGregor trying to fight Floyd Mayweather. You have John Jones still on hiatus with his uh, suspension, uh, waiting in the wings. You have uh, Ronda Rousey is obviously going into retirement, I'm pretty sure. So the, the need for a star, for a returning star is now, and George St. Pierre will offer that, as will John Jones in the coming months. And I think that uh, the two stories, the two defining stories of 2017, one is the return of GSP, the other is the return of John Bones Jones. And the third story is the story of Cody Garbrandt versus TJ Dillashaw. And I'm going to talk about that in part two of tonight's uh, show. Um, and I'm very excited to, uh, to talk about, you know, to talk about all of these topics as far as who I think should be next to fight GSP, um, I think the UFC uh, welterweight division was a division that GSP has already ruled. It's sort of in the past. Um, if GSP were to kind of get back into that division, it's, it's such a clogged title picture with Tyron Woodley facing Stephen Thompson in a rematch uh, on March 4th. And Damian Maya is presumed to be next in line for that title shot, as he should be. GSP left that weight class behind. Um, the weight class itself has kind of moved on from him. So I think the next fight, the next fight for GSP should be nothing else but a fight with UFC middleweight champion Michael Bisping. I think that that's the fight that needs to get made. Great Britain versus Canada. Uh, the two winningest UFC fighters of all time, Bisbing passing GSP's octagon victory record uh, this past year in 2016. Um, and it would put GSP in the company of Randy Couture, BJ Penn, and Conor McGregor if GSP is able to pull off that victory. He would be the new UFC middleweight champion if the fight's a close fight, which I imagine that it would be. It would potentially set up a rematch with George St. Pierre and Michael Bisping. The first fight allows Michael Bisping a chance to get the first major payday of his career. The second fight would allow Michael Bisping to get yet another major payday in his career. Um, and then if that, you know, if Bisping loses the first one, Bisping loses the second one, then we could see a major trilogy on our hands, which uh, I would love to see that. They're both you know, in their late 30s, GSP will be 36 in May. I believe his birthday is May 19th. Uh, kind of creepy that I know his birthday, but I know so much about this guy. He, he has been my favorite fighter for a long time. He's the reason why I love the sport. He's the reason why I, I've uh, grown to be a huge fan of the sport because I got to see his career from the 23-year-old athletic product, you know, the athletic phenom specimen that he was, knowing that he could definitely become a champion, watching him become the champion, lose his belt, and then go on to have one of the greatest runs uh, in UFC history. And for my money, he is the best uh, UFC champion that the UFC has ever had. He's the best UFC fighter of all time. He took on all comers, fought every number one contender that the UFC put in front of him. Um, 
didn't duck anybody uh, within his division. Um, he was the king of the 170 pound weight class, the welterweight uh, weight class, and he's easily the greatest welterweight of all time. Um, made BJ Penn quit inside the cage, beat Matt Hughes twice, um, avenged every loss that he's ever had. He's practically undefeated. He's lost maybe three rounds in his entire UFC career uh, in his championship run. Uh, maybe two rounds, both to, or yeah, three rounds, two rounds to Hendricks, one round to Jake Shields, which I don't know how Jake Shields got a round off of him. But this is great for the sport. This is great for the UFC. He's 35, going to be 36 in May, but he has kept up with his training. I've, I've followed him since his retirement, his semi-retirement, I should say now. And he has been actively training consistently over the course of the last four years since he has went into semi-retirement. So a four-year uh, break and a return It'll be interesting to see what happens. I really hope we don't see him come back and lose to a guy like Michael Bisbing in devastating fashion, being that he has been out of the octagon for four years, but GSP looks like he is in supreme condition uh, to this day, looks like a, a, an athletic freak, uh, freak of nature, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table. Um, this is the best... The best case scenario for the UFC, while Conor McGregor is trying to pull the publicity stunt with Floyd Mayweather and and do that, uh, George St. Pierre is going to come back and actually give the UFC something to build off of rather than running away from the UFC just to get an extra payday uh, off a gimmick fight. Uh, George St. Pierre left the sport. Yes, he did. But he left the sport due to the fact that the sport was at its worst uh its worst point with the TRT being allowed and things of that nature. Um, he was a guy that was a huge adversary to testosterone replacement therapy. He took a break, met with the Fertitta brothers. They had extensive arguments about cleaning up the sport along with Dana White. And without GSP, I don't know if we have USADA in the UFC. Um, although GSP was Canadian or is Canadian, he brought USADA to the UFC with his public stance, uh, on testosterone replacement therapy, guys taking steroids, guys trying to find that advantage. He was the guy that was pr the proponent to make the UFC a clean, uh, league within the sport of MMA. And, uh, I'm thankful for that. For that reason alone, he should be considered, uh, the greatest all, of all time. I, and for that reason alone, along with all the other reasons that I've just stated. Um, that being said, I think that he would beat Michael Bisbing. I'm confident that he would beat Michael Bisbing. I'm confident that he would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy like Jacare Souza. Um, it would be very interesting, very interesting to see what happens. But my take on it is that the Bisbing-GSP fight needs to be made. Yoel Romero... Um, needs to fight Jacare Souza in a rematch to kind of solidify himself. That fight, that first fight with Jacare, was a very questionable decision in my eyes. I thought Jacare won that fight. So I would put GSP up against Bisbing for the middleweight strap, possibly try to put Jacare in there again with Yal Romero as the co main event of that card sometime in October. Maybe if Bisping wants to fight Yoel Romero and then fight GSP in the third quarter of the year, that could happen as well. Um, I, I watched uh, Michael Bisping on Area Helwani. He talked about that uh, specifically. So it's very interesting now. GSP being a middleweight title uh, challenger, that, that is a very interesting concept, and I'm very excited to see if that comes to fruition. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was part one of the Thomas Take Sports podcast. Thank you for tuning in.